Praise God. I'm David Iyakia, minister at Mbale Church of Christ, and I'm glad again to speak to you on our topic, Hope Amidst Fear. And we're moving on with our series on how we can uh, have hope amidst fear. And the first subtopic that we had talked about trust in God, and aspect number two, we talked about biblical fear and biblical fear actually has got two segments one is how do we mean by having biblical fear and then the second segment is the application of wisdom so today let's begin by reading the scripture Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, we see in the second segment, we actually have words like wisdom and knowledge. Now, these two words are linked up together. Beginning with knowledge, knowledge is knowing truths, facts, or principles. But then, if you only know truths and facts and principles, and you fail the next important part of applying that, then you are actually the opposite of being wise. And so what do we mean then? Wisdom is the rightful application of knowledge. So when one has knowledge and fails to apply that, he is actually the opposite of wisdom. Now, I want to go straight to explaining the next segment, which is wisdom. Wisdom is an aspect that all of us need, and especially in terms of fear. We may understand, and we may have principles that we live by, we may have knowledge, but then that knowledge cannot help us in times of fear unless we, as the body of Christ, apply that to our everyday life. Take, for example, a quote from George Bernard Shaw once said, We are made wise not by the collection of our past, but by the responsibility for our future. The Roman writer Seneca confirms this by saying, no man was ever wise by chance. The pursuit of spiritual wisdom is good for your human trinity. And that is the mind, the body, and spirit. Now, let's go straight and look at some of the tips that can help us actually cope up with um, fear. One of them is choose wisdom. If you want what's best for you, for your soul, it starts with making a decision to have it. Then number two, trust your instincts. And this is where true wisdom manifests itself. Number three, set boundaries. Once you desire wisdom, the rules for how you live your own life will always change. Number four, surround yourself with wisdom. Now, we have uh, people that have wise counsel. We have books that one can get and study and read them that can help you as well to surround yourself with every possible material that can help you cope up with that. And so, therefore, as the body of Christ, how I pray that every opportunity that we have the knowledge that we have, all these facts about our God and all these materials that we have, how I pray that we practically apply what we know 
so that we can acquire or achieve wisdom which by the end of the day help us to cope up with every fear around us. I therefore conclude by saying that if you want to be wise, it all begins by you making a decision to go for it and then act on it. Blessings. Thank you.